Is Nancy Pelosi a liability for Democrats in this campaign? I think it's more reflective of the fact that Republicans are bankrupt on ideas. They don't have anything else to offer except to go after Nancy Pelosi uh, to, to win elections. I mean, forgive me, but Connor Lamb apparently thought it was an issue because he dumped Nancy Pelosi. Connor Lamb won because he, wrote, he ran a local election. He talked about what effect local, what effect the federal government has on local politics, on people's lives, and that's why he won that election, not, not because of Nancy Pelosi. House Democratic Caucus Chairman Joe Crowley in the hot seat on Fox News on Sunday dodging a question on whether Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi is a liability for Democrats heading into the midterms. Marjorie Clifton was a consultant to the Obama campaign. She's a principal at Clifton Consulting, and Chris Bedford is editor-in-chief at the Daily Caller Foundation. Thanks to both of you for being here. A little heads up, we're watching some uh, breaking news here with uh, Rick Scott expected to make an announcement on his potential Senate run at any moment now. He's down in Florida and uh, he's uh, surprising a few folks with this. He's the governor of that state there and he's uh, taking on Bill Nelson, the Democrat of that state. So we will be watching that for you. Meantime, Chris, I'll go to you first. As we're talking elections and we're looking at the midterms, is Nancy Pelosi a liability for she's her party? Just, she's just one of many. There's a couple things that are going to stop Democrats from being able to replicate the Connor Lamb win that we saw earlier, and that's the leadership of the Democratic Party is one of them. That includes Nancy Pelosi. When she came in, she, she led alongside Tom Daschle, who had a 20% a or he voted against a bans on partial or four bans on partial abortion, uh, birth abortion. He was much more moderate of a, of a leader. After him came Harry Reid, who came in with a, only a 20% rating from groups like Narrow. But nowadays, you've got Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi at the head. It's a full-on liberal group. They've got 0% from the NRA. They've got 100% they've got from pro-abortion groups. And they're going to be held to that by party faithful, who are as radical as they've ever been, at least on the left. And finally, after that, you've got President Donald Trump, who really gets the Democrats and the liberals excited and activated and going. And as long as he's president, I don't see them going to the moderate side at any point. I mean, Marjorie, how are Democrats going to deal with this, considering there are growing calls for her to step aside? Well, and, and I think the point about local elections is, an, is a good one because you see both in Republican and Democratic politics a completely disgruntled base around um, the leadership coming from the federal side. So that's where I think the eye on these, these localized election and who is running, it's going to be different in every state. I mean, in Wisconsin this week, we saw voted into the Supreme Court the first Democrat in 20 years. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of these kinds of shifts that are happening that are environmental. And I think, you know, the idea that in Florida right now you have a, a popular governor deciding to take on um, one of those congressional seats, that it, it's, it's, it's significant of the call for change. Um, I think there is a modulating that is, is kind of happening both on the Republican and Democratic side, which I think is promising, frankly, to find a middle ground. And I think uber progressives and uber conservatives are going to find their base, but they're not the base that usually decides elections. It's usually those in the middle. Well, Chris, I want to get you to respond to that, but I want to show this poll, congressional candidate preference. If election held today, Democrat 46 percent, Republican 41 percent, one could talk about some momentum on the side of Democrats. But as you just heard, uh, the chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, Crowley, uh, talking about Pelosi and whether she's a liability for the party, but moving on to attack Republicans saying, if this is the only strategy they have that is not a winning strategy and they're bankrupt on ideas if they keep targeting Pelosi. Well, the Republicans probably could come up with a few more ideas beyond just attacking Pelosi. One of the reasons that they're always drawn back to it is because it's, it, because it's been so successful. Ever since she's really been in leadership, she's been a lightning rod figure. She's a hardcore liberal from San Francisco, and that does not usually play well in places like Pennsylvania, New York, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio. That plays very terribly, and, it's, and the, the Democratic base is going to keep on supporting her. So that's not going to change, and Republicans can go after that. But they should broaden their appeal. They should talk more about guns. They should talk about immigration, and they should tackle these hard issues that got Donald Trump elected president and will probably help the Republicans stave off some of the big losses are going to take regardless in this next election. Meanwhile, Marjorie, I don't think it's a stretch to say we're going to hear that crumbs comment that Nancy Pelosi made about uh, those tax cuts a lot in the coming months. What do you think? Uh, I, I do think we need some new material, so I do, I do agree. And it is interesting. I've heard that um, a new play is that Republicans are running on the idea that if Democrats are elected, their whole focus is impeaching Trump. And that's actually an unpopular thing because 
for most, for I think a lot of centrists um, across the board, they're thinking, oh my gosh, that means complete chaos and disorder. And so that is actually a very unpopular uh, point and one that's winning for some Republicans. Ted Cruz just had here a campaign where he actually made a fake news clip of what would happen if Democrats are elected. And I think that was a, a creative approach. So there, I, I think all around, everyone's just sort of exhausted and would love to see some new material. Already? Already? <laughs> it's a big year coming up. Get ready. Chris, Marjorie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.